Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. In today's Ruby snack number 16, we will continue with our Deploy to Digital Ocean series with part five, Configure Apache and DNS. We'll get to see our app live and in action today. What we'll go over in this episode is how to configure Apache for staging, enable the site, edit the staging DNS, and then QA the site. If you want to code along, you'll just need a virtual private server set up. Again, we're using DigitalOcean in this mini course. You'll need the Rails app deployed to the server as a staging environment. You can check out these previous videos in the series, Ruby Snack number 14 and 15. First up today is step 21. We will SSH into our production server, copy the default file as the staging file. So Apache gives you a default file that you can edit. So we'll copy that and then we'll open the new file for editing. Then we'll include the configuration for staging. So you'll need the server name, whatever domain name that you're going to use. And usually there's an alias with www. Then you'll need your email for the server admin and then you'll need the document root. So we've deployed it to there, www, Ruby Thursday staging, and then you'll root it to current and public. Because when you deploy, there'll be different versions, you wanna make sure it's rooting to the current version. We're gonna have our Rails environment as staging, and then we have a couple of log things to see where they're going, and then the directory also, again, you wanna make sure it says the same as the document root. Let's get started. Opening up our terminal, we will SSH into our server. Then we'll run the command to copy that Apache config file. I need to enter my password for the server. All right, and now we will open up that file. And we'll scroll on down, and you see they have some examples for you, but we'll go ahead and delete those examples and then copy in just what we need right there. So we're gonna copy in what we have there. Okay, let me make that a little bit prettier. We'll back this up a little. You can't use your mouse. You have to use the arrows when working with Nano. So I'll just make it a little bit prettier. There we go. And just to scroll down, just to show you there's more, just some information, and then it ends with that closing tag for virtual host. So we'll control X and Y to save. Now we will enable the site. It takes three little commands. The first one is to disable the default site. Then we enable the staging site that we just set up. And then we need to restart the server. Back in our terminal, we'll run the first command that disables that default site. Then we will run the command to enable our site. Here we go, and then finally we need to restart the server. And it's restarting. At this point, you can actually go and check out what's on your server by going directly to the IP address. Now you see our staging is working. We have to put in our username and password, and it's up. But it's more fun to have it on its own domain name. The first step is to log into your provider, then add a staging subdomain and then change the IP address to that DigitalOcean IP address. I'll show you how to do that in GoDaddy since it's a very popular site. I'm gonna load this up on a domain name I have, Ruby Snacks. So let me add a subdomain. We're going to choose an A record. That's easiest and we'll name it staging. And then we need to paste in the IP address. That'll be different for you. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to be a much shorter time so that it populates more quickly. And we will finish. But for GoDaddy, you need to click one more button. They wanna make sure this is what you want. So now we can go to staging.rubysnacks.com and here we go. We need to log in with our username and password. Are you alive? Prove it. And here we are. The next step is to QA our site, especially for things that are set up specifically for your staging environment. You need to go ahead and test those, especially like sending email. I like to go ahead and test everything when I'm working on a project. It may take time, but it's definitely worth it in my opinion. So 
So here we are back on the site. I'm gonna click sign in and I'm gonna go ahead and sign up. Make sure that's working first. So I will type in a new address here and then I'll put in a password and then sign up. Great, we signed up successfully. So now I don't have a link to it, but let's just go ahead and navigate to Starship's new and let's create a new Starship. I know I'm kind of mixing my, uh, my sci-fi here, but let's make a Battlestar Galactica. And we'll put the captain in there, of course. And let's put in an email address. This is what we really want to test to see if we get that email from SendGrid. And create Starship. And it appeared to do so. Let's go check our email. And yes, I've got the email just as expected. Thanks for watching this episode of Ruby Snacks. If you have any questions at all, please be sure to leave a comment below. I will try to help you as best I can. If you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can click that big red button right there to do so. If you are not already on my mailing list, you can click on this Ruby to head on over to rubythursday.com to sign up to get more Ruby Thursday awesomeness in your inbox. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.